Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy iPod King Carter here. I want to welcome you guys to the third episode of my NBA 2K19 wish list. And today we're going to be talking about Pro-Am. Now before we get into the video, make sure you guys drop that like. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let's get into the video. So in today's video, we're going to be breaking down Pro-Am into different parts. The first thing that I really want to talk about is the cosmetics within Pro-Am. Now, everybody already knows there's two Pro-Ams in NBA 2K18. Now, the biggest problem is I don't think that there should be two different Pro-Ams anymore. I think that we should give one Pro-Am building to Pro-Am and we should give the other building to Jordan Rec Center. I mean, I know you guys probably don't want to call it Jordan Rec Center, but I feel like 5v5, choosing spots where you want to play and who with within a big world will bring NBA 2K back as a franchise. Now, I know a lot of people are probably like, bro, that's not even Pro-Am. That's something you need to talk about with Park or whatever the case may be. No, because Jordan Rec Center essentially had calls, free throws, Everything that Pro-Am has in a setting where other players can watch you play, which would bring back that tournament aspect. If you guys did miss episode two, I talked a lot about tournaments, personal tournaments, private lobbies, the whole shebang. We're going to be talking about that as well as in Pro-Am, but I just wanted to, you know, put a little, you know, a little, a little something out there for 2K to, you know, kind of reel in real quick and understand that. I think the rec center really needs to come back. First things first, let's get the small stuff out the way. Let's talk about cosmetics for Pro-Am. I truly believe that no one should be able to buy boosts for their player for Pro-Am. Now I know a lot of people are probably going to say, but bro, you tripping. Why wouldn't you want to buy boosts for Pro-Am? I feel like Pro-Am is a very competitive scene and I feel like maybe Buying boost for walk-on is pretty cool, but as far as team Pro-Am goes, I don't think that any boost should work. Now, I know that people would say, but boosts are a part of the game, and I feel like boost should be in the game. No. Honestly, if a team of a stature is working on a record, and they're trying to be the best Pro-Am team in the whole entire, whatever the case may be, PS4 sphere, Xbox sphere, whatever the case may be, I feel like in that competitive team Pro-Am aspect, nobody should be able to buy a boost. But that's just me. You could buy a boost for my career, you could buy a boost for my part, but I don't think you should be able to buy a boost for Pro-Am, especially team Pro-Am. Now let's talk about accessories. Everybody knows that when NBA 2K18 came out, the whole accessory movement for Pro-Am was essentially not in the game. It took a lot of patches for 2K to get it right, but they finally put uh, accessories inside the game, and they've been doing all right, but I think that they can really take off if they give us the accessories on how we had it last year. I mean, I know that choosing certain accessories and everything like that inside of your mod court is all cute and dandy and everything, but I really feel like we need to be able to go back on the fly and change anything we want in any type of realm. I don't like going to either park, going to pro-am, and not being able to change my accessories on the fly. What if everybody that game wants to wear a headband? What if everybody wants to wear an arm sleeve? What if everybody wants to not wear socks for a challenge? We have to do all of that pre-pro-am. Why can't we go into the pro-am, wait in the lobby to shoot around or kick, whatever the case may be, pull our phones out, go in the dressing room, the locker room, whatever the case may be, inside a pro-am and do it there. I mean, you guys do give us a locker room before my career games, correct? So why not give us that option before pro-am games, especially team pro-am games? Let's dive a little deeper into the whole team pro-am aspect. Now, me personally, I'm going to keep it 100% honest with you guys. I really haven't played many team pro-am games this year. And that's essentially because I play with a lot of randoms. I play with a lot of subscribers, a lot of friends, and I'm always purging my PSN friend list. So what I say to you guys is, how do y'all truly feel about playing with only nine players on your team and only having one manager? Now, I know a lot of people are probably like, man, one manager is cool. You know, if, if anybody bickers with another, they can't just go and delete the whole Pro-Am team and everything like that. But I feel like if this is a trust situation, they should be able to have like the admin, the moderators, and you know, all that that deals with type of management roles in the Pro-Am team. Now, I truly don't have many problems with the whole custom creation of your courts and everything like that. 
there are a few features that are missing, especially the scaling, the ratio, the flipping of certain uh, logos and everything like that, being able to view them while you're going through creating everything. But essentially, that's something that 2K should be able to just wipe their hands with quickly. So last thing about Team pro -Am before we dive into something else. I feel like the way that this new 2K E-League thing is going about, they have players that are, you know, trying to submit from all around the world. I feel like some actual team should have a chance to, I shouldn't say be within that realm since this is a one player only one shot chance, get in through the draft your own way. But I feel like teams should be able to go up against some of those hard hitting teams such as Kingsguard and the 76ers, you know, all the Cavs Legion, everybody like that. I feel like some top tier pro-am teams if you're in the top 10 pro-am teams and they throw a tournament for pro-am and they have the nba 2k e-league people coming over and everything like that i feel like those top 10 pro-am teams should get a chance at whatever prize money they have within those tournaments i feel like they should be like the first did pick teams and the funny thing is for the people that are now in the nba 2k league and everything like that are those people that used to be in those Pro-Am teams, will they be on the NBA side or will they be on their Pro-Am friend side? So there's really a dynamic there that I really would love to see next season. I would love to see like the top 10, maybe top 20 or even top 50 Pro-Am teams for PS4 or Xbox One play with some of the NBA 2K League players. I mean, that's just me. I'm a fan. And I feel like 2K should somehow build something that will allow that to happen now let's dive into something more i think you guys know where i was going with this we need private lobbies we need private sessions for pro-am this has been an ongoing thing for nba 2k since the my crew days we need to be able to lab with other teams. We need to be able to talk smack against other teams. We need to be able to throw tournaments against other teams. We need, the community needs it. Okay, 2K, what I need to say to you guys is give the game to the community. Give us what we want. Give us what we need. And I promise you, everyone will be playing your game on a daily because it will be too much fun to put down. Now, going into that, let's talk about fun for a moment. Gameplay-wise for Pro-Am, there are critical points in the game that people just can't stand. Now, I talked about Bump Steel for the majority of my last video, so I don't think I really need to bring it up too much here. But one thing is, outlet passes. If a player is on the outlet and you're passing them the ball, you know that they're a three-point shooter instead of a cutter. If you pass the ball to them and they're standing there, it may be a sharpshooter, whatever the case may be. That sharpshooter has catch and shoot, correct? That sharpshooter has glue hands, correct? Why is there an animation that the player that's throwing the ball throws it completely over their head? The person that's supposed to catch the ball jumps for it, doesn't even know what he's doing, doesn't have any control over his player because it's two animations working in one. It does not make any sense and it needs to be taken out of the game we need to have better pinpoint passing i've seen players in the nba throw miraculous passes full court passes i've seen full court alley-oops when will 2k implement this within their game because it doesn't make sense why we throw certain passes and get certain animations and there's nothing we can do about it let's talk about the paint for a moment I feel like big men have a lack of movesets for Pro-Am. I think that watching big men in the real NBA, the moves that they have, the finesse that they have, the strength that they have, it's not really there too much in NBA 2K18. I feel like if you do have a post-scoring big, sometimes you might see a couple post moves from that player, but you don't see people feeding the paint, clearing out, and letting that man go to work because we know that the bump still may happen, but also... There's that chance that all a player has to do is put his hands up and then null and voids anything that the other player is doing. If a player puts his hands up like this and he keeps his hands like this, there should be no reason why a player that up fakes can't simply go up under somebody's arm on the other side of the rim. If I'm backing a man down and I'm up and the rim is literally below me after doing a spin move in the paint, 
I should be able to easily go up under that player, not feel like I'm getting bombarded by a, a, a wall and throw the ball up up to a person that got his hands up like that. That person is not moving. He is not mobile. He is not reacting to the ball at all. He just has his hands up. We have to do better with those animations inside the paint. Let's talk about the right left. When will it ever really leave? When will the right left really truly be gone? Now, I haven't seen too many zigzagging this year, but the right left is out of control. A person could do a right left, get a screen, shoot a three with no problem. A person get a right left, get a screen, run baseline, moving shot, works every time. When will the exploits that people put on the game ever get addressed by taking out the little things that give people those certain type of exploits? I'm sorry, I think I had to address it. What's up with the Alley Oops 2K? I don't know what happened in NBA 2K18, but you guys did not get the Alley Oops right. There's a lot of different things that you guys have to do with these alley oops as far as different animations, especially throwing animations. We definitely need new throwing animations for alley oops. And essentially, if a player is a posterizer or a slash or whatever the case may be, why can't they catch the ball the right way and make the right decision in midair? If 2K is made to say that this person has posterizer, he has glue hands, whatever the case may be. He has a high percentage of posterizing somebody jumping real high with a vertical, catching a ball. Why can't they do an animation that may either posterize somebody, like how LeBron James did a few people, or DeAndre Jordan did a few people, or Blake Griffin did a few people? Why don't they have those type of animations where when you catch an alley, you can actually do something with it? I've seen animations where people go grab the ball, they put it behind their head. It's like, okay, 2K, I know you guys want to give us all the control, but come on. If a person's on a fast break and I throw him the oop and I got dimer and I got alley-oop passer, I, all I should be able to do is just throw it up and their player should just run and go get it. <laughs> I mean, they shouldn't have to press square. They shouldn't have to be using R2 while doing it. It's just too much. Give us the simple things. All right, guys. So if I missed anything from gameplay, please, please, please leave it in the comment section. I'm still going to do that top 25 to 50 questions from all the videos in one and do a final video. So let's go ahead and move into walk on Pro-Am. So I'm just going to go ahead and address the elephant in the room. Walk on Pro-Am needs an entire revamp. I feel like there should not be any shoot around whatsoever until 10 players are in a game ready to go, ready to play. I don't want to be in a shoot around situation waiting on more players to come up. Now, this goes from watching how the draft combine went for the E-League. I've seen people literally say, I got my point guard. I got my shooting guard. Got my small forward. Got my power forward. Got my center. We're ready to go. Let's go to tip off. I would love to wait in that screen for five players or get that screen with whoever I put in my squad. I would love for that to happen. And then once we're all loaded in, all 10 players, I would love to get 40 seconds, just like I get in about my career, to shoot around a little bit on the camera angle that I choose to play on. I don't want to shoot on your camera angle. I want to shoot on my camera angle. I want to be able to get my shot up a few times, figure out what jump shot I got on before I start the game because we all switch our jump shots a thousand times, figure out what dribble moves I have on, figure out what moving shots I have on, what dunk packages I have on, so I can know how to play without making mistakes as soon as the game starts. There's been plenty of times where I think I'm about to do a snatch back or I think I'm about to do it behind the back, and it's always a different move than what I equipped before because I can't remember what I equipped. But 2K, that would help us a lot if you just put us, all 10 of us, in that game and said, hey, you know what? Let's let y'all guys shoot around. Instead of saying 9 out of 10 players, we waiting, then that Jones say game starting, and then the player that came in last, he don't even get to put a shot up. That ball come in like, who am I playing with? They don't even know who they're on their team. I would love if you guys gave us something where we'll be able to see who we're playing with beforehand instead of having to sit inside of the walk-on thing in our phone trying to check people's stats before the game start. It just... So let's talk about customizing in walk-on Pro-Am, right? 
Now, I know that walk on Proem is supposed to be very bland because Team Proem gives you the ability to customize a lot of different things. Now, I said this in episode one of my 2K19 wishlist series. I would love to see different colored jerseys for home and away for walk on Proem. I would love it. Please make it happen. I'm tired of looking at the black and gold. I am sick and tired of it. It gets very stale. It gets very boring. And 2K, what happened to choosing who's home and away? Let's flip a coin. Let's, you know, let the little cruiser start where, before the game start. You know, trying to figure out who's home and away. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's pretty lit. Like, in the loading screen, if it got the loading screen, you know, you got your point guards and all this to say who we're going to be going up against. And the, the thing just go back and forth. Picking a home team. That's dope. Put that, put that in the game. Please. Please. Now, I know this is going to sound very, very stupid, but at the end of the game, when our points is adding up for our badges and for our VC and everything like that, give me a skip button, please. I don't really care about checking for what stats or badges or anything I'm going to, how much VC I'm getting, my bar attribute progress. I don't care about none of that. Unless I want to care about it. So please give me the ability to skip all that. So we can move on to the next one. Same goes for the park. If I'm at the park and I want to look at who on my team. Or who co who coming up next. Who them people on the spot is. I don't have any time. Because all the stats and stuff is running from a good game. And I'm just sitting there like bro when is it going to end. Please give us that skip button. Please. On the court coaching or calling plays or whatever the case may be i feel like every player in a pro-am should have the ability to do that when they have the ball in their hands not just the point guard if we're on defense and i walk away or whatever the case may be and we may be in a, a three two set and i get kicked out the game we shouldn't be in a three two set for the rest of the game everybody should be able to change defensive uh plays change all offensive plays and not have to worry about that who to guard bull crap now, I know a lot of people are probably going to say, bro, just turn off who to guard. Sometimes people need who to guard on. So, but I just feel like, why should we have to deal with running certain plays? We want to run a three tour, whatever it case may be. We got to run it that way. And then the who to guard got your man standing like this over here. But this man is in front of you. <laughs> Has to make better sense. So I'm about to shoot my shot real quick, guys. Can we please get the grand badge back, 2K? Shot taken. All right, guys, I've said what I've said about Pro-Am. I think I've came here and did what I had to do. Please bring some private lobby so we can lab, so we can get some tournaments going. Give this to the community. If I missed anything, any problems, any concerns, anything on your wish list about Pro-Am, please leave it in the comment section below. Don't forget to leave the like on today's video. Make sure you guys subscribe if you're new to the channel. And make sure you guys leave a comment below with your NBA 2K19 wish list. It's your boy IKC signing out. I'm going to see you in the next one. Peace. All right, guys, this is the end of the video. I hope you guys definitely enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, and you can also watch one of my previous videos after hitting that subscribe button. I hope you guys like this video. Let's get this thing to 5,000 likes, and this is your boy IKC signing out. Peace.